Hi, it's Dr. Katherine Harris again, English 10 Great Works of Literature, Techno Literature at San Jose State University. In this video lecture, we're discussing the part two of A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, the 1962 novel with 21 chapters. So we pick it up with part two in talking about Alex, and I want some very specific things to talk about for the, this part two here that sets us up for part three. So with part two, we have a raging struggle between good and evil, even from the very beginning. If we turn over to page 93, we immediately start talking about this sense of goodness, and, and the Ludovico technique will be brought up at this particular point. Down at the very bottom, uh, there, there's talk of it. It's not been used yet, he said. Uh, not in this prison, 6655321, as Alex has come to be known now. Himself has grave doubts about it. I must confess I share those doubts. The question is whether such a technique can really make a man good. Goodness comes from within. Goodness is something chosen. And we see this come up again on page 94 in this overcrowded jail. So it continues in this conversation uh, between Alex and um, the governor. So he's trying to make a choice. He's He's been in jail. It's overcrowded. It's getting horrific. He's already he's going to commit another murder, and he needs a way out. The, uh, the prison life still has an opportunity for, for violence, for it's for recidivism, which means going back to violence. Uh, the church is supposedly equals an opportunity for redemption, and the pastor or the priest becomes... Uh, the chaplain becomes the, the father figure in part two, very much unlike what his father was in part one. Now, the, there's a murder of an inmate by cellmates, and there's a question about whether uh, he was forced to do it. But on page 106, we return to this idea of free will. Let's turn over there. This is chapter three in part two. Down at the bottom of the page, he's having a conversation. It says, it may not be nice to be good, Little six six five five three two one. It may be horrible to be good, and when I say that to you, I realize how self-contradictory that sounds. I know I shall have many sleepless nights about this. What does God want? Does God want goodness or the choice of goodness? Here, it's not just free will, but it's also the, it's the choice between being good and being evil. Is this is a man who chooses the bad, perhaps in some way, better than a man who has the good imposed upon him? Deep and hard questions, little. Six six five five three two one, and we get it again a little bit later down on page one o seven. So God help us all. I shall like to think. And then he began to cry. But I didn't really take much notice of that, brothers. Only having a bit of a quiet smack inside because you could vidy that he had been peening away at the old whiskey, and now he took a bottle from a cupboard in his desk and started to pour himself a real horror show bolshy slog onto a very greasy and grassy glass. He downed it, then said. All may be well, who knows? God works in a mysterious way. Then he began to sing away to him in a real loud, rich golos. Then the door opened, and the chassis came in to tell chalk me back to my bonny cell. But the old Charles still went on singing this hymn. It sounds like he's gone a little mad from being in the prison as well. In chapters one through three, Alex is as violent as he ever was, and he ends up being there for about two years. We concluded part one with him being only 15, so he gets to be 17 before he's about to make a choice for the Ludovico technique. His identity becomes confusing externally because he's only referred to as a number through a majority of part two. Where is Alex psychologically and internally? The structure of part two represents a character development for Alec. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily also mean that he develops towards goodness, but we do have a different kind of development. He moves away from his gang. He's not as in charge. We get more internalized, retrospective narrative, but we also get uh, remorse about the choices and the decisions that he's made, but not in the way that you think he will. Uh, on 85 and 86, that's where he points out that he's been in there for two years and that he's got to get out of there at some point. Um, the experiments start, really, the discussions of them on pages 102 and 103, and that's the end of chapter 2. It's described as, kill the criminal reflex, that's all. And this is at the bottom of 102. Full implementation in a year's time, a year. 
He's 17 now. He'll be 18 at the end of the project. Punishment means nothing to them. You can see that. They enjoy their so-called punishment. They start murdering each other, and he turned his stern blue glazies on me. So I said bold, With respect, sir, I object very strongly to what you said then. I'm not a common criminal, sir, and I'm not unsavory. You notice... Alex changes the dialect, and he leaves the NADSAT dialect. The others may be unsavory, but I am not. The Chief Chassel went all purple and creeched. You shut your bleeding hole, you don't you know who this is? All right, all right, said this big back. Then he turned to the governor and said, You can use him as a trailblazer. He's young, bold, vicious. Brodsky will deal with him tomorrow, and you can sit in and watch Brodsky. It works all right. Don't worry about that. This vicious young hoodlum will be transformed out of all recognition. And those hard Slovos brothers were like the beginning of my freedom. So Alex here makes a choice to say yes to the Ludovico technique. But is this a representation of goodwill, or has Alex been lied to about ex what exactly is going to be done to him? We're going to see that it's torture for him in the way that he narrates it. Even as a retrospective narrator, we're going to see and hear the descriptions of what he actually goes through. And I'm also going to show you a clip from the movie. Um, just to get a sense of it, those of you who, who uh, wear contacts may already be used to that, but if you're not used to that, try placing your finger near your eye for, a lar for about a minute and see how it is that you feel. And then multiply that by 3,000 times, and that's what Alex had to go through, just, just that, physical, that physical part of it. Chapter 6, which begins with us on page 126, gives us again, if you'll remember from part 1, the rising action. In the beginning, Alex says, stop it, stop it, stop it, and keep on creeching out as if he's in pain. And then there's a description, and he calls it a horror show. Again, that's a real irony from the very beginning of the novel about what's horror show. Uh, and, and in this rising action, we see that Alex is going to break. I'm going to pause for a minute and show you the clip from the movie Clockwork Orange, because I think that particular scene really captures what it was like for him. <laughs> 